Okay, so let me remove this animation timeline. Okay, so we'll repeat the steps that we have earlier done. So I'll pull out the space time dependence from phi. Okay, and then everything will be easy. So we'll use the result uh, that alpha uh, phi t of x I can write as e to the i p dot x. Sorry, it's four dot product of four vectors and then phi at 0 and then e to the by this 0 let me make it more explicit and then you have e to the minus i p dot x okay p mu dot p mu x mu that's what I mean okay sorry um, So, this is this vector. Now, this will be e to the i omega alpha t minus p alpha dot x okay and this will give you e to the minus i omega summation over omega p i times t minus times okay let's see whether everything's fine looks looks all right Okay, this looks fine. So that's um, some space and time dependence in here, and then this uh, derivative has to act, right? This del naught will act on this time dependent part, and also on f of k. So you will get uh, so that's this is one point, and then the other point is f of k. this time derivative acting on this piece omega alpha e to the i omega alpha minus summation over pi omega pi Okay. So, this I uh, have just picked the time dependent parts from here and then this derivative will act on these two pieces. Okay. Okay. So, fine. Um, now, Now you will get the uh, following two simple conditions. Okay. So you evaluate this, do the calculation, it is easy, you have done this before already and then that will give you a space dependence which will be e to the i k dot x from here and then you have simple space dependencies coming from here and here and you integrate over d cube x. Okay. So integrating over d cube x will give you the following constraint that you will get delta cube okay, uh, p alpha 
minus summation over p i minus k okay which means that you get the constraint that um, p alpha should be equal to sum over all p i's plus k okay that's the constraint that you'll get okay similar to what we had encountered earlier in uh, when we were looking at a in dagger acting on vacuum and the second con uh, constraint will come when we take um, t going to minus t times 1 minus i epsilon and here is the for that constraint so when you put t equal to minus t times 1 minus i epsilon okay you get e to the minus i omega alpha minus summation omega p i minus omega k t times e to the minus omega alpha minus summation omega p i minus omega k epsilon t okay where epsilon is positive and fixed small number and t we are going to take to infinity so you get a damping from this okay so and there is a summation over alpha of course outside sitting outside right coming from here this one so you see that if omega alpha is less than or equal to summation of omega pi is and omega k then this will contribute okay otherwise that gives you a damping uh, a factor that goes to zero in the t going to infinity limit okay but if omega alpha is lower than uh, this sum then you get a non vanishing contribution so that is why we are saying that these uh, such states alpha will contribute for which this is satisfied and another condition i had already written which is p alpha is equal to summation over pi that plus k that came from the delta function okay so all those states alpha which satisfy these two constraints will contribute to the sum to this sum over alpha others will not okay so that's the conclusion now um, you see the p alpha for the state p alpha which has momentum so let, let's look at this p1 to pn so you you take this state okay and then you have other labels uh, k other label k but this k can be split into many parts so let's say k1 is really uh, k is really not one label but many labels k m okay where all these together make k so k is k1 plus k2 plus so and so forth km okay now if i take such a state in state then it will have a momentum p1 plus p2 plus pn plus k1 plus k2 plus km where this k1 plus km makes k so this condition is satisfied okay but how about this condition now if the energy of this state has to satisfy this constraint then there is only one possibility that your k label uh, your k is not uh, is i mean this this is not one label i'm saying suppose you have many labels instead of this you have p1 to pn then k1 to km then this k1 to km you should not have uh, m of them but only one of them only one meaning you you should have only one label k if that is the case then this condition will be satisfied both will be satisfied simultaneously not otherwise and you know why because if you have uh uh um, i mean we saw this earlier that if you let's say you have omega suppose you have momentum k okay and there is k1 and k2 which make k so k is equal to k1 plus k2 
Okay, so I am looking at in this case a single particle state and in that case two particles, two particles of momentum k1 and k2 such that the sum of the momenta is same as k. Okay, so in this case the energy omega k that is what you will get and here the energy will be omega k1 plus omega k2. And you know that omega k1 plus omega k2 will be greater than omega k unless this is not a two particle state. If it is a single particle state then of course they are equal. But otherwise sum of energies will always be higher compared to a single particle state. Okay? So, you see this constraint that omega alpha should be less than equal to this omega pi that is anyway fixed there is nothing you can do plus omega k together with this constraint that the momentum be, uh, momentum conservation. This can be satisfied only if you do not have so many labels k1 to km but only one label corresponding to a single particle k and then the condition will be satisfied by the equality. Okay? So, this can be satisfied the conditions can be satisfied. only by those states get alpha which are which is so there is only one solution a unique solution which is this okay it, it, this case one label not many labels okay so only this one contributes that is I have shown that A in dagger K acting on P1 to Pn this ket is equal to K I, I can put this label first it does not matter but there is a, a provision for a proportionality constant. Okay. So, it does not have to be equal to this, but it could be some number times this or some function times this and that function cannot depend on how many p's are here okay. and it cannot depend on these values of p's. It can only possibly depend on k, okay. k which is here. So, that is the constant. Okay. So, now we are there we have almost achieved our goal except for fixing this ck and that is easy to fix because it is independent of how many momenta you have uh, how many wh what is the value of n. Okay. So, I can just take a single particle state and then fix this constant. Okay. So, let us fix c of k. So, what is how do I do that? So, let us take a single particle state and it is overlap with another single particle state. Okay. Now, this is how do I create k? I create a k by a in dagger k acting on vacuum okay. with some coefficient here. So, I am using this formula actually. Okay. And you see you will have to multiply with c k inverse. Okay. Now, this is same as uh, I will pull out c inverse k okay. then you have bra p then you have a in dagger k acting on omega and that we know what is what it is here somewhere yeah a in dagger acting on omega is 1 over root 2 omega p times p get p. So, I get um, k times 1 over 2 omega p or k does not matter because because of the delta function. So, what should I write k. Okay. 
so this is c inverse k times 1 over 2 omega k times now both left hand side and right hand side of this factor which means this should be unity and which implies that c of k is 1 over 2 omega k okay so what is the final result final result is a in dagger k acting on a state with n labels p1 to pn gives you um, gives you <coughs> sorry this thing gives you k so it inserts a label k in your original state okay so that's a nice result and already we know that a in dagger acting on vacuum gives you a single particle state okay we conclude that since 2 omega k or root 2 omega k acting on sorry uh, root 2 omega t, uh, k times a in dagger k acting on vacuum gives you this state and then we have shown this is true this implies that any state p1 to pn this state with labels p1 to pn can be generated by repeated application of these a in daggers acting on vacuum okay so this is nice and this is an important result now we know how to uh, create single particle states or in states starting with this operator a in dagger acting on vacuum and we also know how to kill states okay or remove states by acting with a in okay so we'll continue with um, the discussion in the next video and uh, will slowly build up towards scattering.